Hi guys, how are you? You alright? So I'm out again, sun gazing, and I thought I'd just do another quick video. And this one is about uh, my drug days and my psychedelic experiences. And I thought I'd just guide you through some of the stuff that I've done and give you a little bit of an insight. So I'm 40 now, and my first experiences with a drug was weed, and that was when I was at uh, college. Now, I don't know what the great fascination is about weed. Um, I'm hearing lots of stories on this, uh, like it's helping and curing people. I've seen it on YouTube videos with my eyes, and which is good, but I don't personally um, connect very well with it. I don't know whether that's because I have to keep smoking it every day to get used to it and adjust to it. I don't know, but seems like when I do it, I'll go in something called a whitey where I'll just throw up all over the place and uh, I don't know how they can say it's even good when you've got anxiety disorders because hearing your own heartbeat and everything and no uh, I just don't get it at all saying that on another separate occasion uh, at a party um, I took it and I've absolutely pissed myself laughing so that drug itself is breaking the mind controlling program because here I am bursting out laughing for no reason and then automatically as soon as you're on it you start questioning your surroundings in a way yeah it's probably beneficial so yeah in a way it's probably beneficial for other people but fortunately I'm not a weed smoker and I just don't think I could ever get into that now the uh, second one was uh, some pills. I got given some pills later on up and uh, I took them and yeah, I was loved up and it was a good experience. I think I had uh, two, I think, and it was a good experience. Again, I'm pretty much back then, you're gambling with your life because you could take one bad one and end up dead off it or whatever. So it was a big gamble and when you're with a group of friends and they say, hey do you want to get together and knock these pills back it's very hard because you just want to be the in with the in crowd so yeah i took them and yeah it was a good experience i was but um again i would never recommend anybody doing that or messing around with something that you don't know uh, very dangerous as we're going up um i've also has some MDMA um, all I can say about that was it was uh, some kind of pink stuff and I took it and I was floating pretty much floating all the way around when I took that can't really remember much about it other than that I was floating when I was on it I was just floating over like Whoa. again it was an experience Another thing that you have to be really careful with, they just have to be careful what people are giving you. MCAT, the next one up. Very powerful little substance that um, came back into light in 2010, I think. And obviously it was legal in this country, in the UK. Um, this was massive. Uh, everybody was on this I uh, just come from a breakup and coming back to where I was living and everybody was quiet I was coming down for a good booze, good booze session and everyone was quiet and to get on this and there you go again easily there and I went on to this stuff that stuff is absolutely powerful I have battled with that a few times uh, when I was on it for a, over a year on it every weekend you see it's obviously mentioned in the film captain phillips they talk about the cat quite a lot get the cat a very powerful little substance it is actually a psychedelic substance as well people are unaware of that um, back then how powerful it was they you know when they took it um without them realizing it's a very psychedelic substance if you mess around with it like i did um i've been in hospital with it a few times i thought i was overdosing by taking too much being stupid with it because 
in this country, what we do with things is we just keep abusing these substances when we do them. Uh, there's no off switch. We think, yeah, this is amazing. We're trying to chase this buzz and we just carry on doing it and doing it. And then in the end, you are up for three days anxiety disorders come flying in you're off to hospital on a bloody drip and there you are just basically absolutely fucked up on a hospital bed with all needles hanging off your arms being pumped and feeling sorry for yourself because you've done it to yourself and I was in there a few times and all I can say about that little drug is it's very, very powerful when it first came out. Now it's bashed up to fuck and the last time that I did this is I got told it was um, this MCAT. And uh, so I took some and pretty much ended up fighting for my life on the, on the last one because it had been bashed up to death. And I was fighting for my life on that uh, in the hospital and it wasn't a nice experience it was absolutely horrific i didn't even think i was going to pull through myself so the stuff back then when it first came out um there was nobody bashing it it came out pretty um pretty pure and it was new and nobody needed to bash it and nobody bashed it nobody knew what it was about but everybody was on it it was like a underground tunnel of people that I met, numerous people, one after the other. I was going out and there was just people on it who you would never expect. Everybody, everybody in the local town was on this drug secretly and quietly and it was just, wow. <laughs> you would never believe it. Look, you know, people working behind the tills at Boots and stuff and it was nuts. Nuts little drug. And I obviously did a lot of research on that drug. Obviously it did become illegal after everyone started getting on it. Um, and there's obviously online on YouTube, there's a doctor named Dr. Z who brought the compound back up and um, tried to make it safe for people to take. Now, I don't really see any problem with taking the drug the, when it's not been bashed. Any drug you can eat, um, but obviously, it, again, it's when you start abusing stuff. And that's when, obviously, the damage starts. And obviously, nowadays, with these backstreet dealers, they're mixing it up with God knows what, and you don't know what they're putting into the shit. So it's quite dangerous now. But then it was a very powerful substance and it seemed to have only come in for about a couple of years and then died off it came in as a charge and everybody got on it and then it just died off but you'll get the backstreet dealers coming in trying to say yeah this is the cat yeah try this try this and it's not it's actually just bashed up bloody painkillers or pills mixed with a little bit of the cat or whatever it's very very dangerous these backstreet drug dealers are at the minute Anything for a few quid, anything for a tenner. Um, my other one, obviously, is mushrooms. Now, I've only done these twice, and it's probably one of the best experiences ever. First, before I did these, I had to become a vegan. I had to strip out a lot of shit away from me before I did these, I was warned. So I did these uh, out in the open in the field, and it's one of the best experiences in my life. It absolutely blasted some doors in my brain open. Um, I don't know, I can't really describe and tell you what it actually did, but a very good learning tool, massive. I came out of that um, and I just wanted to learn. And I've seen some wonderfully wicked shit on that drug and uh, I'll never ever forget some of the stuff that I saw and um, here I was even making books out of it to try and capture what I was seeing and it's a very memorable experience I felt like on top of the world for a good couple of weeks for yeah and um, I, I never got back to doing anything else after that that was it after then because I've seen some weird shit and everything and 
um, one of the most wonderful experiences I have ever did, just do that, um, seeing these weird, wonderful golden light elves and stuff, um, which Terence McKenna talks about, but he doesn't talk about the golden elves like I saw, um, absolutely. I had to come away from that after that, you know, because you're never right in the head again once you see something like that. <laughs> so you fucked yourself up. So I'll give you a, a little bit of guidelines about some of these drugs and uh, the psychedelics. And what I can say is, you know, everything's okay in moderation. Um, as long as you know what you're doing and you read about your stuff and keep a fuck away from just keep the fuck away from backstreet stuff so just keep away from that because i'll tell you something your life is fuck all to them people them backstreet dealers yeah you will be in hospital dying and they'll only get what a couple of years and they'll be back out doing the same old shit trying to sell it to somebody else so just keep away from the backstreet stuff i even thought about yeah oh grow my own mushrooms and stuff um but obviously, obviously, kids and stuff now, and family, and I thought, nah, I'll do it later on in life when they've grown up a little bit, and then go and explore it further. So one of the biggest, most top drugs ever that has hold on your life is alcohol. And you know, when you do that as a teenager, all the way up, you gradually, gradually drink more and more and more, get hooked on it more, and it gets hold of you, it's the demon that is, the alcohol. You know, when you're living a lifestyle of a teenager and you're drinking all the time, you know. I was living in a house with a group of people and I was doing it, I must have been doing it for a year straight, every day. I was just drinking. I could stop if I wanted to, I just thought this was the norm, you know, I had friends around me who were drinking and we thought, yeah! and. Even though that you think all the problems, you can get rid of them, you don't care, and you can have a laugh on it, and you can have a joke with all these people. It all comes to an end, and then at the end of it, you are left on your own. And that's pretty much how it goes, you know, because it's a demon. The de mo most powerfulest, horriblest substance, which is legal, and it's a demon basically it, and it has a hold on you and alcohol if you abuse the alcohol like I've done before comes and hits you hard it'll give you the anxieties and depression and sink you into a slope horrible people say well a little bit of alcohol is all right here and there we're on the it's like a nation in the UK is just hooked on alcohol just to get along with everybody else we have to have like substances to live with each other and that's just really sad nowadays i thought i'd just give you a, a little insight about some of the stuff that i've done in the past and you know what it doesn't make you a bad person because you've done some of these things you know they're there to try and you are they're there to try but also you're chanting yourself on some of the stuff that have been offered to you and that's the scariest part about things because you have to be very careful with what you do and what you take and you know when you're drunk filled and then someone offers you something and you'll just automatically do it because other people are doing it who are around you and it could be fatal for you so I will never ever say I recommend you doing any kind of substances whatsoever but you know I would certainly say some of the stuff that I've taken has been a tool for opening me up I'm awake because of uh, the mushrooms and the cat, but um, again, it's all about control and not abusing things and knowing what you're taking. But I just thought I'd have that little chat with you anyway, and I'm going to love and leave you because obviously it's getting dull and I need to go and take a shower. So, I'll see you later. <sighs>